Hey guys, today I've got three questions that a subscriber submitted on eliteclinicalgroup at gmail.com. They emailed me their questions there. So we're going to go over them right after the intro. Hey guys, ECRG here, back with another episode. Today I've got three questions that a subscriber submitted, and if you're interested in asking any questions anonymously, I won't say your name or anything like that, email me eliteclinicalgroup at gmail.com, or otherwise you can always ask questions down in the comments below. And if you want me to make a video on it, I'll make a video on it. If not, I won't do that either. But today I've got someone who emailed me and they said, uh, hi, I'm not gonna say their name. Um, I'm currently searching for a job as a CRA. I do not have any experience as a CRA, but have a BS in health science, and I've been working as a quality associate for the past two years. I have a few questions if you have time to answer them to help me find a job in this field. So, all right, so she said she's a quality associate. So, and then she said find a job in this field. So when I was first answering this question, I thought that she was already in the field as a quality associate. So, I mean, you know, different companies have different names for positions. So I thought that was just kind of like a, you know, person who overviews the quality of the trial or something like that. I've heard of positions kind of like that before. So I, I just assumed that. But she said, how do I find a job in this field? So I'm kind of thinking maybe she's not in this field. But anyway, it won't alter the answers too much. So here's the first question. She says, with someone in my position, what's the best way to get a job as a CRA with little experience? So the best way is gonna be the same for anybody. It's gonna to be to get into an entry-level CRA program. Now, this is a timing thing. Sometimes they want people that have literally no experience, like right out of college. They bring in a few people like that. Sometimes they want people that are study coordinators that have two years experience, literally only study coordinators. I've seen them reject in-house CRAs, startup specialists, you name it. Literally only study coordinators. And as I'm of the belief that study coordinators do make the best CRAs. Uh, they're extremely knowledgeable and, and they know they know uh, they know how to they know they know their way around source documents and all the documents and stuff like that. So I think study coordinators do make the best CRAs, but other other positions can make good CRAs too. So don't let that deter you. Um, so if she's not in the industry, she's going to have to get in the industry first. And it's doubtful that you're gonna get in as an in-house CRA. Uh, it's, it's, you can get in as a study coordinator, but you're gonna to have to put about two years in. So for the average person, I say the best two routes are study coordinator or in-house CRA. And then once you become an in-house CRA, you can then go on to CRA, or you can make the jump from a study coordinator to a CRA. But either way, you're gonna to wanna to apply for those entry-level CRA programs. Sometimes they're called CRA one positions, Sometimes they're called, you know, just entry level CRA program. Sometimes they're just called entry level CRA. You apply for all of those. And I recommend even applying for CRA too. This is this is one of those positions. It is incredibly difficult and has become incredibly incredibly more difficult to make that jump into CRA. Just over the past years I've been in the industry, I've noticed a change. A lot of my friends that are senior CRAs now were able to make the jump to CRA just after one year of experience. Companies were literally kicking them out the door to become CRAs. Uh, you know, I know people six months in the industry, they're being made CRAs. Uh, it's not like that anymore. And I've done a lot of videos on why that is and why it's changed, but it's not like that anymore. You've got to really put your time in and pay your dues to become a CRA now. And so I, I think the best two paths are in-house CRA and study coordinator. Um, get there and you'll be good to go. Um, so, let's see. She said, is there is there a certification program for CRA that will allow employers that I'm uh, to know, let the employers know that I'm capable of this career? Okay, there are certifications, but if you have no experience, you're likely not qualified for them. So you've got the CCRP, you've got the CCRA, you've got the ACRP. Those are three quality and well-recognized certifications they're very, very difficult, I understand, and you want to make sure you've got years of experience in the industry before you even attempt those, uh, just because 
this is going to be a lot easier for you if you've got industry experience and without experience they're not going to mean anything even if you were able to study for them even if you're able to study for them and somehow pass they're not going to mean anything com you know not combined with experience because that's really what recruiters are looking for is to make sure you've got experience um so those are out there definitely would recommend uh, uh well experience is the first certifications are second a lot of times companies will pay for you to take them so you will always want to take advantage of that if you can um, i wouldn't recommend paying out of pocket unless you have to i also don't know many people who have gotten a big salary boost that are cra's that are that have gotten a big salary boost from having those certifications um, there is also master's in clinical research you can also try and get your master's in clinical research that may help um, I know once again I know people that are CRAs who have gotten it and have seen no increase in salary just because their salary is already that high and you know companies are gonna give you twenty thousand thirty thousand dollars difference in salary uh, just be just becoming a CRA uh, when I made the jump to CRA, I got a twenty, a little over twenty thousand dollars salary increase, um, just like that. So, you want to be careful what certifications you do, which one, which ones you don't do, especially if you're paying out of pocket. But the most important thing is experience. All right, that's the second question. Third question are, is what are recruiters looking for most in individuals who are interested in a career as a CRA? All right, this is this is an easy one. Number one. You have got to be willing to travel. Uh, you have got to be willing to travel 65 to 80 percent of the time. I'm not joking when I say 65 to 80 percent. That's literally four to five days out of the week. Three to four, three to five days out of the week. Some days you're going to be gone the entire week. I've got a friend that told me, you know, she she's a CRA at a different company, but she told me she has not been home in 12 days. So you have got to be willing to travel. A lot of people think it's a joke or a lot of people just want the salary for a few months and realize they can't handle it when they say 65% because their current job may say you travel 20%. But that's really only one time a year. No, this is a true 65%. You're going to be traveling at least 65% three to four days a week. So make sure that you can do that and you convey that in your interview. Companies are tired of hiring people that say they want to be CRAs and then they quit a few months later because they can't handle the travel. So that's what they're looking for. Number one. Number two is going to be your previous experience. If you got a, if you got some in-house CRA experience, if you got some study coordinator experience, you're a great fit for the CRA role because you are familiar with what to do, especially if you do some remote monitoring. And then as a study coordinator, you know exactly what to do because really the CRA is going to be watching over the study coordinator making sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. So study coordinators are perfect for the CRA role. Um, so I'd say first is the ability to travel. Second is your experience with what a recruiter is looking for. And then, you know, lastly, this, this last point I'm going to make here on this is a lot of people think after they get experience that they don't really have to, you know, still apply hard for these positions. I still recommend having that 200 club mentality. We've talked a lot about the 200 club when trying to break into the industry. When you're trying to break into the CRA role, you still need to have that 200 club mentality to get in because it is incredibly competitive, incredibly competitive. And it has gotten more and more competitive. Oh, and, and another thing I'll add too, when, when you're talking to recruiters about CRA, do not make it about the money. Do not let them know you care about the money. In fact, I've, I've even told them before, you know, I'm just more interested in the experience, not necessarily the money. Um, so obviously when you make that move, they're going to increase your salary tremendously because they don't want somebody, you know, being there a few months. Because really it only, only takes a few months of CRA experience before you can move elsewhere. And the recruiters will be emailing you constantly trying to get you to come over there once you get some experience as a CRA. Trust me on that. Uh, I get emails all the time from them. So I re definitely recommend you definitely put yourself out there a bunch, shoot for 200 jobs, um, and you'll eventually land on one or two as, as an entry-level CRA. 
and then it's it's easy it's downhill from there you know the jobs will be coming to you um, definitely want to make sure you up, update your LinkedIn after you become a CRA too so those are the top three questions I got from this person as always guys like this video share this video if you thought it was helpful um, thank you so much for your question whoever submitted this question this one's for you uh, if you're also interested in submitting any questions, like I said before, email us eliteclinicalgroup at gmail.com. All right, guys, take care.